This is Armchair Astronauts, and welcome to the rocket history of the Titan IV. The Titan IV was the final iteration of the Titan family of rockets, being a further development of the similar Titan III launch vehicle. It was developed by Martin Marietta, built by Lockheed Martin Space Systems, and operated by the U.S. Air Force from 1989 to 2005. Unlike the Titan I and Titan II, both the Titan III and Titan IV were dedicated space launch vehicles designed to place a payload into orbit. The Titan IV was launched from three different sites, Space Launch Complexes 40 and 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, and Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Both Slick 40 and Slick 4 are currently operated by SpaceX for the launch of their Falcon 9 vehicle, while Slick 41 is currently operated by United Launch Alliance for the launch of their Atlas V vehicle. The cost of launch of the Titan IV was 250 to 350 million US dollars in its basic form, and upwards of 400 million dollars for a more elaborate configuration. The Titan IV had a substantial payload capacity, and was mainly used to carry payloads into low Earth or geosynchronous orbit. That being said, the rocket could carry 21.7 metric tons to low Earth orbit, 17.6 metric tons to a polar orbit, 5.8 metric tons to a geosynchronous orbit, and 5.7 tons to a heliocentric orbit. The main difference between the Titan IV and all other vehicles in the Titan family is that all of its variants were always equipped with two massive solid rocket boosters flanking the core stage that would carry it through Earth's thick lower atmosphere in the first portions of flight. Unlike many vehicles that contain solid rocket boosters, just the boosters are ignited on the ground. Only after the boosters burn out does the core's first stage liquid engine fire. On the Titan 4A, the boosters were the United Technologies UA-1207, which burned polybutadiene acrylonitrile. They had a specific impulse at sea level of 276 seconds, and produced a combined thrust of 14,200 kN, or 14.2 meganewtons, for approximately 120 seconds. On the Titan 4B, the boosters were the Hercules USRM, which burned the same combination of propellants. They had a specific impulse of 286 seconds at sea level, and produced a combined thrust of 15,120 kN, or 15.12 MN, for approximately 140 seconds. The core stage of the Titan IV retained the same basic body of the Titan missile that came before it. The first stage core engine of the Titan missile was the Aerojet LR-87, which was technically two engine units that counted as a single engine. The LR-87 burned a combination of aerosene-50, which was a mixture of unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine and regular hydrazine, and dinitrogen tetroxide, simply referred to as just nitrogen tetroxide by those working in the industry. This combination of propellants was hypergolic, which means that they explode upon contact. While hypergolic propellants are stable in a liquid state, easy to store, and eliminate ignition systems and engines that use the propellants, they are also highly toxic, corrosive, and expensive to produce. The LR-87 had a specific impulse of 250 seconds at sea level and 302 seconds in a vacuum, and burned with a maximum thrust of approximately 2,440 kN for around 164 seconds. The second stage core engine of the Titan IV was the Aerojet LR-91, which also burned a combination of aerosene 50 fuel and nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. Unlike the LR-87, the LR-91 was made up of a single engine unit. The LR-91 had a specific impulse of 316 seconds in a vacuum, and burned with a maximum thrust of approximately 467 kN for around 223 seconds. The LR-91 had a unique ignition system, in which it would light while the core LR-87 was still burning, in a process called hot staging. This was done to eliminate the need for a more complex method of ignition for the engine and push the propellant to the bottom of the tanks. There were two different optional upper stages to choose from for the Titan IV, the Centaur and the inertial upper stage. 
The High Energy Centaur Harvest Stage was initially used on the Atlas family of rockets, but its design spread to the Titan family as well. The version of the Centaur used was called the Centaur T, and its power plant consisted of two RL-10 engines, burning liquid hydrogen fuel and liquid oxygen oxidizer. They had a specific impulse of 444 seconds in a vacuum, and the entire stage burned at a maximum thrust of 147 kilonewtons for approximately 625 seconds. The inertial upper stage was a solid propellant upper stage, consisting of two stages itself. The first stage was an Orbis 21, which had a specific impulse of 296 seconds in a vacuum, and could provide a maximum thrust of 190 kilonewtons for approximately 150 seconds. The second stage was an Orbis 6, which had a specific impulse of 289 seconds in a vacuum, and could provide a maximum thrust of 80 kilonewtons for approximately 101 seconds. As the IOS utilized solid propellants, it could do much less work compared to the Centaur upper stage. The Titan IV had a total of 39 launches, 22 with the Titan IV-A and 17 with the Titan IV-B. The main difference between the models was in the solid rocket boosters. While the Titan IV-A had steel-cased solid rocket boosters and was independently de developed, the Titan IV-B had composite-cased solid rocket boosters and was developed out of the Titan 3-4D. The Titan IV also experienced four failures in its history. The failures were split 50-50 between each variant of the launch vehicle. Notable launches of the Titan IV include the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft to the Saturn system, and several launches for the US Air Force and the National Reconnaissance Office. The Titan IV was developed as part of the Complementary Expendable Launch Vehicles program after the Challenger disaster in the mid-1980s. After the accident, officials were not so sure of the safety of the shuttle in carrying satellites to orbit, so they commissioned expendable launch vehicles, including the Titan IV, as a more reliable option. However, the Titan, similar to the shuttle, was expensive to launch, and it also used toxic hypergolic propellants, which were becoming increasingly unpopular within the industry. As a result, the capabilities of the Titan IV were replaced by those of the Atlas V, Falcon 9, and Delta IV with the Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicles program. Its final launch occurred on October 19, 2005 from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The Titan IV was the end of an almost 50-year history of the Titan missile, starting with a relatively simple rocket and ending with perhaps one of the most complex space launch vehicles in history. It has launched some of the United States' largest satellites and sent an international mission on a billion-mile trek to Saturn. Its legacy, however, lives on in the numerous organizations that continue to honor the legacy of the Titan, such as the Titan Missile Museum, as well as the, as well as the launch vehicles that succeeded. Thank you for watching this video on the Titan IV vehicle. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on the video for more like this one.